Shalom. Giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rahakurash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations as always to the elect. We're here to uplift the names of the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, whose Hebrew name is Yahweh. It means He is. All right. Bahashem in the name of the only begotten Son of the Most High, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. His Hebrew name is Yahweh Shai. All right. Yah, He, Yahweh Shai, salvation or Savior. All right. Our mediator our high priest all right and our way back to the father and through him the elect of the nation of israel will be gathered out of all of the various different nations where we have been scattered all right with the second exodus taking place here in babylon the great this spiritual egypt which is being prepared all right so we're not going to save ourselves uh through flying to africa we're not going to save ourselves through you know getting banks and you know, uh, hugging each other. Uh, we're going to be delivered out of this captivity from our enemies via the son of the most high, as it says in the book of Isaiah, the 19th chapter. And I believe the 20th verse, they're going to cry unto the Lord because of the oppressors. And he's going to send them a savior and a great one. And he's going to deliver them. And that's Yahweh Shai. That's in the Holy Scriptures. Now, here in this lesson, I wanted to uh, discuss a uh, particular project, as you can see, it's called the Billion Oyster Project, all right? And uh, we had a gathering here in Dallas uh, this past weekend, right? And one of the brothers from the New Orleans camp put me onto this, and I've been doing a little research on it, and I thought it would be uh, interesting to bring out to the flock, um, as you can see. The Billion Oyster Project, you see, it's uh, basically, as you can see here, we're restoring oyster reefs, all right, which we'll get into that and the importance of it to New York Harbor through public education initiatives, okay? And um, the ecosystem is jacked up, all right, over in New York and all throughout Babylon, the great, you know, the water systems are all jacked up. All right. And it's all predicated upon sin, which is transgression of the law, as we'll show you. All right. The oysters and many other important species that the Heavenly Father placed in the waters are being taken out of the waters. Okay. Eaten. All right. Which is leading to what? poor water quality and now to so-called save the water quality <laughs> they want to turn to the law all right but they're not gonna uh you know base it upon not eating the oysters and you know but putting you know what they say by 2035 as we'll show you they want to put you know one billion oysters back into the water all right to help fix the quality of it because everything is jacked up now as you see our vision a future in new york harbor is the center of a rich diverse and abundant estuary all right and uh, estuaries are very very important to an ecosystem i remember growing up we would always go to the estuary all right and my cousins would you know ride the jet skis all right but um Estuaries are very important, and we'll get into that. Um, now, the estuary, which is very, very important, all right, uh, to the ecosystem, it says our impact, it says it took less than 100 years for New Yorkers to wipe out the oyster population in New York Harbor. And this is not just happening in New York. It says, now the Billion Oyster Project is rebuilding this important natural resource and habitat, all right? As we uh, did a lesson a couple of weeks ago, me and the Apostle uh, Raha, uh, we were talking about how nature is taking its course. Well, this is a part of that too, 
you know, we were dealing with the women, but, you know, pretty much, you know, uh, people are realizing the importance of order. All right. Which when you deal with the earth, the heavenly father created everything and placed it in its order. All right. These things aren't just here, the estuary, you know, the river, you know, the ocean, you know, uh, you know, coral reefs. You know, these are things that we just think are there. No, the Heavenly Father has these things there um, for a reason. You know, within the law, statutes, and commandments, all right, the Heavenly Father, when you go to the book of Leviticus, okay, here in Leviticus 11, all right, it gives you the laws about animals and foods to eat. Okay, it gives you the beast of the land that you can eat and cannot eat. Okay, and then when you get to uh, let's see here, verse um, because it go uh, verse ten, well, verse nine, it gets it goes into the things that are in the waters. All right, that you are to eat and not to eat. All right. And we bring these things out to our people. And you notice the Christians have a big problem when we bring this out. All right. And these things that you're eating that are unclean may be good to you and you may see no issue with it. But what you're doing when you eat these things are rebelling against the order that the Heavenly Father set so that we can have a clean earth, so that we can have clean water. And now you're looking at the result of rebellion against Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, as we always bring out in the book of Isaiah, the 24th chapter. Okay, the Lord told us not to eat these particular things. All right, Leviticus uh, 11 and 10, and all that have not fins and scales in the sea and in the rivers, of all that move in the waters and of any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. So, you know, crabs, you know, uh, lobster, which lobster at one point was prison food. Now they are delicacies. Look it up. Just look it up. <laughs> Paste it in the comment section if you find something. All right. Um, the lobster was once considered prison food. All right. The, the people knew that that was absolute filth to eat, you know. But uh, now these are things that people, you know, uh, uh, gladly eat. And when you look at the condition of the people, the condition of the uh, food, the condition of, uh, you know, people's health. It's uh, a lot of it has to do with their diet, which our people are number one in all of the negatives. All right. When it comes to these particular uh, diseases because of their diet. OK, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. But these things are an abomination unto you. They shall be an abomination unto you. Ye shall not eat their flesh, but ye shall have their car. Uh, but ye shall have their carcasses in abomination. Whatever have no uh, fins, nor scales in the water, that shall be an abomination unto you. In the scriptures, all right, um, clearly tell you you can't bring an, uh, a clean thing out of an unclean thing. Okay. So a lot of Christians, they like to bring out Cornelius in that story where, you know, where the Lord showed him unclean, you know, animals and this and that and told him to eat, which eat means taking a philosophy, taking understanding. But when you read down in that chapter, clearly it's talking about men. It was speaking of uh, the Israelites who were in an unclean state via following idols through faith being accepted back into the fold. Now. When you're eating these things and what happens in this world is utter rebellion. This is why we get on the Amalekites, because with the power they have, they have not set up a system in this earth to where these things are, are known. And these so-called religions and churches where our people are going and uh, so-called getting their you know, uh, spiritual nourishment, they're not taught these things. They're not taught to respect the order of the Heavenly Father. Let's get the book of Psalms. All right. 104 and 24 says, O Yahweh, how manifold are thy works in wisdom, how they, how they, how have they made them all. The earth 
is full of thy riches in this chapter. All right, uh, Yahweh's care over all his works. See, it says, so is this great and wide sea wherein are all things creeping, innumerable, both small and great beast. All right, now in the book of Genesis, the first chapter, all right, uh, the 21st verse, it says, And God created whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, the winged fowl after its kind, and God saw that it was good. Okay? So, he made things for the earth, he made things for the water, but the bottom line is that it said that it was good. And when you look up this word good, real quick, and then we'll get into the project. And the water to that brother, I forget his name. Um, the word is tawab. Good, pleasant, agreeable. Okay? The things that were placed in the water were placed that they were agreeable. Okay, they were good. They were excellent in their order. Everything is good in its order. Don't give a damn if the clam is good to you. Its order is to be in the water, all right, doing exactly what it's supposed to do, which we're going to show you the benefits of those oysters. Now, after everything has gone left, now... They want to have a billion oyster project to pretty much follow the law. <laughs> to put the oyster back into the water so that it can be good. You see? And what we're witnessing is the, uh, the understanding of the order of the Heavenly Father. Order leads to cleanliness, a better earth. Okay? So since 2014, they've been doing this. Okay, the Billion Oyster Project. Okay, they want to restore the waters. <laughs> All right, and not one of these uh, things are going to mention that the Bible, all right, warned us. Okay, the Bible warned us. We are making progress uh, towards restoring a lost habitation, motivating a generation of New Yorkers. To care about and for the ecosystem around them. And this is what the Holy Scriptures told us. But you have these pastors, all right, telling you, you can eat what you want. You don't have to care about the Lord's order. But the earth suffers. Okay? So let's get into this project. Um, let's see here. Let's go to this one. The Billion Oyster Project aims to clean up New York's water. Um age of humans all right <laughs> more than two billion people do not have access to clean water it's particularly limited in parts of asia and africa a big threat to water around the world is of course pollution its effects are easily measured in the waters off big cities And this is why the scriptures say, prepare slaughter. Let's get that in the book of Isaiah, the 20, uh, Isaiah, the 14th chapter in the 21st verse. This is the reason why you devils got to go. Okay. It says, prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. All right. They conquer lands. All right, and they build these these very toxic cities. All right, well, the you know first, second, and third industrial revolutions have just polluted the earth. Not only you know the, you know these uh, particular uh, mining companies, you know, but technology itself, their, their their technology pollutes the earth. Everything that they do pollutes the earth. And they don't care about the order of the Lord. This is why the Holy Scriptures calls them out. And why they're so worried about hate speech. This is the book of Psalms 50 and 16. But unto the wicked, the Most High said, What hast thou to do to declare my statutes, but that thou shouldest take it thy, my covenant in thy mouth? You call yourself the chosen people of the Most High. All right. But when you look around at the earth, you don't see any uh, uh, anyone respecting the order of the most high so who the hell are you to take the covenant of the lord in your mouth 
seeing as though thou hatest instruction and cast it my words behind thee. See, you hate instruction. You give your mouth to do evil. You do not like instruction. And instruction is very, very important. All right. Instruction is important to any organization. Right. But when it comes to the earth, people don't give a damn. And people have grown proud. We're living in a very, very proud age. People are proud against Yahweh Bashim Yahshah. People don't see the need for order. But they're, they're witnessing a very toxic and, and uh, uh, decrepit environment because of that mindset. All right. Ma, uh, ma, wa, sar. It says discipline, correction, chastening, all right, <laughs> bond, instruction, okay? And this devil lives by the philosophy of do as thou wilt, even in diet, even in, you know, when you go fishing. There's particular things as you go fishing, you may pull out, that may you may catch, you put it back in, all right? If it's uh, uh, something that's needed to, to, to stay in the ocean, you're not supposed to eat particular things so that the, 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 the water stays clean. As a matter of fact, oysters. All right. And we didn't think about these things before we came into the truth. But oysters are a crucial in, uh, component of global ocean health and ocean health is very important. OK, everything the Heavenly Father placed within the, 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 the oceans, the rivers, the, the estuaries, streams, everything he put there, he put there for a reason. See? And a part of our chastening and us catching hell and, you know, being cursed and waking up in these latter days was to understand the importance of these little things. Okay? The scriptures say this in the book of, uh, let's get this real quick. Uh, I know it's in the book of uh, Sirach Matter. Yep, Sirach 5 and 15. Be not ignorant of anything in a great matter or a small. So this may seem small to a lot of people. This may seem lame. All right. But when you see your big ass auntie. OK, opening up that clam or that oyster. All right. She's aiding in the destruction of the ecosystem. All right. But but what's even worse is there is a system. There is a, uh, you know, um, it's kind of late. So my mind is kind of um, not there all the way. But there's an institution responsible for going out and fishing these things out of the sea. They have a. a, a, a uh, show but i used to watch it you know deadliest catch you know they they used to you know they go on these boats you know out in some dangerous waters and catch all manner of you know oysters crabs you know and things like that and make good money off of it okay those things are not to be eaten and it's bigger than just because it makes you sick but more importantly, too, is that it leads to a cleaner earth. It leads to cleaner water. Why don't you want clean water? There's plenty of things that you can eat. See, the law is grievous to the average nigga. As a matter of fact, let's get that. The laws are not grievous. Okay? of our first John uh, let's see here the law is not grievous mm. first John five and three. First John five and three. 
in two. But by, by by this, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. All right. And we know that we're not justified by the law or righteousness in the law, but to just disregard the law shows you a disobedient child. OK. And we keep it to the best of our ability. There are simply things that you can do and cannot do. All right. You cannot sleep with another man's woman. You cannot eat catfish. You know, these are things that, that, that are easy. And it's not that it makes us so much better than everybody, but it's, 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 we fear the Lord. It says, for this is the love of the Most High, that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not grievous. Let's read that in the NLT. Loving God means keeping his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome. Okay, let's look up this word grievous or grievous in the uh, in the Greek. Because when people hear that you have to have order or keep laws when it comes to the creator of heaven and earth through his only begotten son. Okay, they get mad, but yet they'll go and take their ass to work and follow every rule to the uh, uh, <laughs> possible. When the so-called white man tells you to stop at the stop sign, you do that. Well, most some of you do it. Some of you break it any damn way. But the, the point is, the creator has an order. The word is barus, barus, heavy in weight, metaphorically burdensome, stern, weighty. So people focus on the fact that it says you can't do something. But what about what you can do? There's plenty of things that you can eat out of the sea. Cruel. It's not cruel that you can't eat clam, lobster, crawfish. Now, you may have liked these things when you woke up, maybe before you woke up. But it's simple to just put them down. All right. It's not uh, 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 cruel or violent. It's helpful. And it requires discipline, which the Edomite has pushed a very, very wicked and undisciplined vibration onto the people. Oysters are a crucial component of global health. These animals filter. All right. Filter and clean the surrounding water and provide habitat food and jobs don't you know this particular uh, species that uh, uh, create jobs for others <laughs> this is i mean the, the the creation is very dope but we're going to get into that it says in some places oyster reefs can serve as barriers to storms and tides preventing erosion all right protecting productive estuary waters which we'll get into the estuary so a oyster reef, a oyster reef um, creates important habitat for hundreds of species, organisms like mussels, which people eat those, uh, uh, barnacles and sea animals settle on them. People eat all of this stuff, creating abundant food sources for commercially valuable fish. All right. So you take the oyster out of the water, all right, and it leaves the whole ecosystem, all right, at a loss, all right? And then things don't do their job, the water's polluted, all right? Coral reefs are through, all right? You can look up that research. It says oyster reefs provide habitat and uh, to forage fish, invertebrates, and other shellfish. All right. What is the problem about oyster reefs? Overall, they estimate that 85 percent of the Earth's oyster reefs have been lost, typically due to over harvesting habitat uh, degradation. Well, well over harvesting starts all of that. OK. It says uh, degradation and disease. See, all the over harvesting leads to what disease in the water. The researchers note that the scope of, of oyster loss exceeds that for any other shallow water marine habitat that have been similarly studied. OK, so the importance of the oyster exceeds most other uh, um, other a lot of the other 
species that habitat the water, okay? Let's see here. What are some of the threats of oyster reefs? What, let's see. Oyster reefs. In some location, oyster reefs can protect underwater vegetation and waterfront communities from some effects of waves, floods, and tides. Well-established eelgrass beds stabilize the bottom, providing additional resilience against wave action. So the most high through his only begotten son and the holy angels, the top scientist. All right? Science just means to know. Like, he knows what's good uh, uh, for a particular situation. When he created this vessel called Earth, he had in mind everything that he wanted in every place, man. And the, the, the powers that be totally disrespect that order. It says, oyster reefs, uh, coral reefs, and seagrass can help buffer storm surges and wave action prevent erosion improve water quality and provide habitat for marine species oyster reefs protect coast all right and storm surge and wave action and help reduce coastal erosion now let's get one more scripture and then we'll get into these videos um let's uh sirac 42 maybe okay Yep. Let's just get to the point. Sirach 42 and 21. He hath garnished the excellent works of his wisdom, and he is from everlasting to everlasting. Unto him may nothing be added, neither can he be diminished, and he have need, no need of any counselor. So you see, the Esau, he's counseling the most high. Nah, this shouldn't be like this. Nah, we can eat this. Nah, we don't, you know? And look at the result. Oh, how desirable are all of his works that a man may see even to a spark. All right. Even a spark. You see a spark. You think that that's just something that's amazing to see. <laughs> all these things live and remain forever for all uses and they are obedient. Okay. All things are obedient for all uses. All right. All things are double one against another. And you have made nothing imperfect. One thing established the good of another, and who shall be filled with the beholding of his glory? All right. And there's another one that goes into kind of like the same thing, but I'm going to, uh, I know in the next chapter it goes into pretty much, man, creation as well. Hmm. fish you know and everything created it's a beautiful chapter read that Sirach the 43rd chapter we've only seen a few of his works <laughs> we're gonna see more all right now um let's go back here and, and check this video out more than two billion people do not have access to clean water it's particularly limited in parts of Asia and Africa. A big threat to water around the world is, of course, pollution. Its effects are easily measured in the waters off big cities. In New York, only a handful of traditional fishing boats still ply the harbors. They're the last of their kind. In decades past, the Hudson River was a rich and productive marine ecosystem, thanks in part to millions of oysters that helped to keep the waters clean. Today, almost all the oysters are gone. D Today, almost all the oysters are gone. Due to overfishing and pollution, but a group of conservationists is working to turn back the clock. Their goal is to bring back a billion live oysters to these waters. 
New York Harbor used to be full of oysters. 200,000 acres of oyster reef was the dominant habitat type in the harbor. And back at that time, 500 years ago, the harbor was also full of fish and other marine life. And the oysters are the, the keystone species in that ecosystem. So when Europeans first arrived in New York Harbor, there were so many fish that you could catch them just by looking. When who? Oh, let's, 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 let's rewind that. There's also a whole hell of a lot of beavers over here. Which beavers are another thing that's important to the earth. <laughs> the ecosystem. Stone species in that ecosystem. So when Europeans first arrived in New York Harbor, there were so many fish that you could catch them just by lowering a basket over the side of the boat and pulling it back up. So the harbor is actually literally full of live animals. Oysters are remarkable filter feeders that act like living sewage treatment plants. A single oyster can filter 60 gallons of water every day. Along with clams and shellfish, they also remove excess nitrogen. So when you go back to these laws, all right, most people think, oh man, this shit good, man. No, the Lord put these laws in place so that the earth can be clean, so that the water can be clean. The importance of the law. Okay, and we'll get Isaiah 24. Okay, but this is the importance of the sons of God being placed back in their rightful order. All right, Romans 8 and 19. You see, and we had to go through this fall and, and awaken to the earth being in a dead and decrepit state so that we can understand the importance of righteousness. All right. As a matter of fact, let's get the book of uh, Psalms 119 and around 70. <laughs> Psalms 119 and 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statues. Okay. <laughs> it is good for me that I've been afflicted that I might learn thy statues. So we were afflicted so that we can learn the importance of the statues, the commandments, the order. Okay? NLT, my suffering was good for me, for it taught me to pay attention to your decrees. Call Halal Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Psalms 119 and 75. I know, O Yahweh, that thy judgments are right and that thou faithfulness. In faithfulness thou has afflicted me. The Lord wanted us to go through this. It's a hard teacher. All right. And this is how the story was written. All right. And now that we're here, we're awakened. I wouldn't have it any other way. It's tight, but it's right. See? So the Lord um, has brought us and awakened us unto a wicked, wicked, most the most wicked ran rulership ever. So that we can know and understand the importance of righteousness. Okay. Psalms 119 and 67. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. See, because you, you, didn't, you didn't really get afflicted until you learned the truth. You see, when you learn order, then the real, the real hell starts. Okay. But now I have kept thy word. <laughs> All right, let's see. Um, blessed is the man, Psalms 94 and 12. Blessed is the man that whom thou chastenest, O Lord, and teacheth him out of thy law, that thou mayest give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit be digged for the wicked. And the, 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 uh, the pit is being digged for the wicked, okay? So let's go back to uh, the uh, the book of Romans, the eighth chapter. In the 18th verse, it says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to can be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So it's be beautiful we, because this is our way back to glory. Okay? Humbling ourselves unto righteous order. Okay? For the earnest expectation of the creature, all right, which we're we're the top creature on the planet Earth. A creature just means a living being. 
Okay? We are known as a creature in the Bible. Okay? People see that word creature and, and bug out. Okay? Uh, second Edris 8 and 45 says, Be not wroth with us, but spare thy people and have mercy upon thine own inheritance, for thou art merciful unto thy creature. And the Lord having mercy on his inheritance, the true Israelites, and uh, under Yahweh Shai, placing them back in, you know, the Garden of Eden, Jerusalem, and setting up a righteous government is going to lead to all creation, you know, being able to uh, uh, operate in righteousness. See? For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. Everything is waiting for the sons of God to be manifested. And this is what we're crying for first and foremost. All right. And when he reveals who his children are and places us back in order, then all of these laws. All right. Will be implemented in the earth. All right. And it's going to lead to a righteous, cleaner, better smelling, all right, uh, uh, earth based upon order. That they use to grow their shells and tissue. The billion oil to grow their shells and tissue every day. Along with clams and shellfish feeders that act like living sewage treatment plants. A single oyster. The Lord created living sewage treatment in the form of these particular creatures can filter 60 gallons of water every day along with clams and shellfish they also remove excess nitrogen that they use to grow their shells and tissue the billion oyster project collects oyster shells from local restaurants and plants them in floating cages on artificial reefs. If all goes as planned. Now, if the laws were kept, would they have to do this? See, they're making their own oyster reefs, but the Heavenly Father naturally had those formed. Okay? But Esau, he doesn't give a damn. All right, the people on the earth, period, don't give a damn. Okay, and now you have these these individuals boasting themselves to be the uh, chosen people of the Lord. Well, what have you done to uplift the Lord? What have you done to uplift the God of Shem? Who, have you taught the people and made them to, to respect the order of the God of Shem? Okay, the scriptures in Genesis 9 and 26 say, Blessed be Yahweh, the God of Shem. Oyster larvae will nest on these old shells and reproduce. We hope that by restoring oyster reefs, we can return that those ecosystem functions, the services that they provided traditionally. So oysters filter the water, they provide food and habitat for thousands of animals, they stabilize the bottom, and they can protect the, the shore from uh, storm events and wave action. If this project succeeds, then the tiny oyster will return to its role as protector of a megacity. Now, who made it a protector of the megacity? And... <laughs> and watch this one too this, this devil here man how a billion oyster project will save New York's waterways one small step not only are oysters delicious they're vacuum cleaners for our harbors but you're eating it one adult oyster can filter 50 gallons of water a day Many of America's waterways are extremely polluted thanks to agricultural runoff, sewage, and industrial waste. Polluted waterways harm sea life and threaten our health as well. But where there's a problem, there's always a solution. In this case, it's a solution that you can snack on at a local bar. More oysters? Yes, please. So I want to know, can oysters save our waterways? To find out, I'm going to meet with the... <sighs> 
good people at the Billion Oyster Project, who are on a mission to clean and restore New York Harbor with oysters by 2035. I'm Lucy Biggers. Ain't gonna be no 2035. Hell nah. All right? Hell nah. The men of the Lord under the, 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 the most high God, Yahweh, through Yahweh Shai, is going to set up a righteous order on the planet Earth. That's what the throne of David is all about. Why ain't Ronald Dalton talk about the tabernacle of David? Anyway. And this is One Small Step. Today's episode is sponsored by Fidelity. What happens to the oyster shell after you eat it at the restaurant? Well, most likely it's going to landfill. But if you're in New York City, your old oyster shells, they could be right behind me in this pile, which has been collected by the Billion Oyster Project. New York City used to be a hotspot for oysters. In 1609, when Henry Hudson arrived in the Big Apple, there were about 350 square miles of oyster reefs in New York Harbor. That was half. There were about... And who's there? When the Edomite arrived, who was there? All right, the northern kingdom of the nation of Israel. Okay, and the earth, all right, Babylon the Great, you know, the uh, north, central, and south America were like paradise. <laughs> right? I mean, it was amazing. You could drink, you know, the, out of the river. You know, the beavers were in abundance because the, the, the tribes knew the importance of these things they knew how to take care of the earth although they were going off doing a lot of heathenistic rituals okay the earth wasn't in this wicked decrepit state you know uh america wasn't in this wicked decrepit state right but here they come on those boats to rape rob and murder this is the curse that has devoured the earth whereas you have the man whom the earth uh, uh, hates all right ruling it and he hates the earth he hates order I should say he hates natural order he wants to do with the earth what he wants he wants to create a synthetic environment nature and natural things are offensive unto him this man is a problem okay and if there is a 2035 we would be dr we would drop dead unless the Lord you know but Lord willing, it ain't no 2035 because they getting ready to bring this haragma and World War Three is getting ready to happen, too. About 350 square miles of oyster reefs in New York Harbor. That was half of the world's oysters. This historic oyster population was once able to filter the entire harbor in just days. By 1910, over harvesting and water pollution caused the oyster population to dwindle. Practice the, the, this man is the devil. Okay, he's the devil. And this is just one. The oyster is just one of many things that have uh, are out of their course, man. This is of dumping untreated sewage directly into the harbor caused oysters and wildlife to suffer. And by 1920... Dumping oil, untreated sewage, and all manner of pollution into the ocean. the oyster capital of the world was no more. That's where the Billion Oyster Project comes in. Launched in 2014, their mission is to return a billion oysters to New York waterways. One adult oyster can filter 50 gallons of water a day. So that's a really important part of what they do here in our harbor. Ann Fraioli is the director of education for the Billion Oyster Project. Another really important thing that they do and see, these people are, you know, amongst the, the world, they're looked at as people who care and right. But see, really, the elect of Yahweh Bashim Shai, we've been calling for the Heavenly Father to restore order to the earth and for a cleaner environment. Y'all not calling on the Lord. Y'all want this place to continue. Is they create reefs. They cement on top of each other, and they create three-dimensional structure underwater, which attracts a lot of biodiversity. And that's what we should have here in the harbor, because it's an estuary. And estuaries are places where other organisms come to breed and to have nurseries for their young. An estuary is the large tidal mouth of a large river where fresh water and salt water mix. Okay, and in the scriptures... 
Um, I, let me see, I was going to get. As a matter of fact, I had this video on the importance of an estuary. Um, let's just get to the point here. Let's just watch a little bit of this. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm a nature nerd like that, so. North Carolina's estuaries are some of the largest in the world, covering over 3,000 square miles. These shallow and broad expanses of water are unique economic and natural resources. Scientists and researchers at the UNC Coastal Studies Institute are studying these estuarine ecosystems and our interactions with them. I'm Mike Peeler. I'm the program head in estuarine ecology and human health at the Coastal Studies Institute. I have a joint appointment as an assistant professor at the UNC Chapel Hill Institute of Marine Sciences. An estuary is a place where the land and the water intersect on their way to the ocean. Uh, watersheds drain to rivers. Rivers transport materials in the water to the coast. And when the rivers meet the coast, they begin to widen out. And in this area where they widen out and begin to interact with salt water is an estuary. Estuaries are definitely not homogenous. People think of them as, as one thing. But if you look through the estuarine gradient, there are multiple habitat types. The most obvious difference is water depth. But the depth of water determines the way that the system functions. If you have very shallow water, you can have photosynthesis on the bottom. If you have deeper water, you only have photosynthesis in the water column. Along the fringes of estuaries, such as the one where we're standing now, are lots of different habitats, including marshes. Um, as you get farther down into the salty areas, you have seagrasses, and you also have oyster reefs. It's important to study estuaries for several reasons. First and foremost, they're a really important area for productivity and processing of materials in aquatic systems in general. To understand what's going on in an estuary is essential to understand the connection between the land and the water. So if we don't study these processes and see how they're working, we won't know the things that they are doing that may be of value to us, and we also won't know the processes that were occurring that may be lost as humans continue to affect the landscape. We've been doing a whole lot of work on oysters. Uh, they are important in ecosystem function in that they clean the water column and they transport materials from the water into the sediments, which changes the way that a system functions. Um, in transporting material from the water to the sediments, they also change the way that nutrient cycling occurs in sediments. Mm. There has been a lot of faith put in oysters to help enhance water quality, and oyster restoration is being employed as a tool in many systems in which they are trying to enhance water quality and combat the effects of eutrophication. We're really interested in the specific processes that oysters stimulate in the sediments. Rather than just to think that the, the material that goes from the water column to the sediments is lost, we like to know the exact fate of that material. And that involves some pretty uh, involved experiments assessing specific processes such as... All right, so you can, you know, go into that more. Um... Young. Is that how the filtering is happening? They're feeding? It's part of their feeding process at the filtering. The oyster opens up just a little bit. It has hairs called cilia along the edge of its body. It waves those cilia, which creates a little water current. So the oyster is kind of sucking water in, and any particles will stick to the side of the oyster's body. And it can actually tell the difference between algae, which is food for the oyster, or another particle, like uh, organic particle of sewage. And it'll eat the algae, and it'll take any other particles, cover them in a shell-like substance, and eject them. So then those particles drop down into the mud. And there in the mud, those particles can be processed by other organisms that can't process them in the water column. So they're really clearing the water and helping move things through the system. Billion Oyster Project works with 75 restaurant partners around New York City to collect spent oyster shells. The shells are picked up once a week. Now they're not gonna stop eating them. All right, they're going to create their own uh, version of this. <laughs> All right, let's look at a few more. All right, uh, uh, fighting climate change with one billion oysters. The 
The Billion Oyster Project is a non-profit organization. Well, our mission is to restore oyster reefs to New York's harbor. It's called the Billion Oyster Project because the goal is to reach a billion oysters in the New York Harbor by 2035. New York Harbor used to be totally full of oysters. You know, a billion oysters is a tiny drop in the bucket compared to what used to be here. 50% of the world's oysters were coming out of New York Harbor. When you think of New York City, we don't necessarily think of it as a coastal city. You know, we see the skyscrapers, the busy streets, Times Square, but we don't necessarily associate it with water. We're not installing the oysters for consumption. We're putting them in the water for educational purposes and also the benefits of the ecosystem. Oysters provide three essential ecosystem benefits. Oyster reefs act as a home or even just a breeding ground for fish. So when you have more reefs, it increases the biodiversity. Can we have crabs? We have a big crab. So you can see that bluish color on them, like a robin's egg. The second ecosystem benefit is that they filter water. So one oyster can filter about a gallon of water in one hour. They take in water that's suspended in the water column. And then on the other end, they'll create sort of like a pseudo feces, which is fake feces, where that sediment then is heavier. So it's deposited like sandwood and sink down to the bottom. And oyster reefs can protect shorelines. And oyster reefs, they grow pretty much flat. Um, as opposed to upward. So All right, so the point, you know, pretty much, you know, the point was made on that. Um, let's get a few scriptures, though. I think, let's see, Isaiah 55. No, that's not the one I was thinking about. Anyway, let's get this in the book of Isaiah, the uh, 24th chapter. Um, and the Bible likens, you know, uh, righteousness and this doctrine and truth unto, you know, pure water, clean water, you know, and, um, this devil got to go, man. All right. This is uh, Isaiah 24 and four, the earth mourneth and fadeth away. The world, uh, languisheth and fadeth away. The haughty people of the earth do languish. <laughs> It says, the earth is also defiled under the inhabitants thereof. And people are through. People are hurting, man. And it, it, what, it, what it really all boils down to is that the wicked are in authority. Let's get that in the book of Psalms or Proverbs. Proverbs, the 29th chapter. In the second verse, it says, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. The righteous will uh, 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 restore order. To the earth but when the wicked bear rule the people mourn and what you think is freedom has led to your downfall your unhappiness you think you're happy just like in the, in the garden that philosophy that eve took in she thought that it was good it, it, it was good for food and it made you wise but look at the end result of that all right Isaiah 24 and 5, the earth is also defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, and broken the everlasting covenant. And, and you Edomites are the inhabitants. As a matter of fact, when you look that word up, okay, the word is Yashab, to dwell, remain, abide, all right? And the scriptures tell you the earth has been given into the hand of the wicked, all right? And through his mentality as the scriptures say in the book of sirach the uh, 10th chapter sirach 10 and 1 a wise judge will instruct his people and the government of a prudent man is well ordered see and in the kingdom of heaven as the scriptures say the people will learn righteousness as the judge of the people is himself so are his officers and what manner of ruler Man, the ruler of the city is such are all that dwell therein. See? So the people have become like Esau. Even you niggas in the hood, you're acting like Esau. That's his vibe. You put on his covering. You didn't cover yourself with the covering of the Lord. You're covering yourself with the covering of the shadow of Egypt. An unwise king destroyed this people by allowing these industries to uh, exist. 
You see? But through the prudence of them which are in authority, the city shall be inhabited. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord, and in due time, he will set over it, one that is profitable. Do you believe that? <laughs> I was watching the elder Yakya, uh, brother, I love watching that brother video. Do you believe that? Are you with that? He is just in all his ways. <laughs> hey, man, the heavenly father is going to destroy you devils, man. And you niggas who love his way. OK, uh, uh, you're going to pay. OK. So the inhabitants of the earth, starting with the ruler. OK, uh, uh, ha have transgressed the laws. Changed the ordinance and broken the everlasting covenant. There's some precepts to that. See, even that goes back to the garden. Breaking the commandments led to hell. And this is the point we're at here in Genesis 6. The earth was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. People were what? Transgressing the laws, man. The sons of God were going off. The earth was just full of wickedness, so he brought a flood. This is where we are. All right. And God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt and all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth okay and see we hope to be in the the lot of noah which amongst all of that filthiness noah found favor and grace in the sight of the lord man this word corrupted or corrupt is shahath all right to destroy corrupt okay to go to ruin to decay and the earth is in a in a decayed state Let's look up this word decay to rot or decompose they everything the, the 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 sea is dying the air is dying the people are dying everything is in a state of death everything's focused on death to be ruined to be spoiled to pervert, to deal corruptly, okay? In industries that allow you to just go fish out all of the dang clams and shrimps, that, that, that causes corruptness, see? But but amongst uh, Noah, verse 8, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. See that? And we hope to be in his state where the Lord is getting ready to bring the second death. We want to be in good graces with the Lord, man. All right. Leviticus 18 and 24. Defile not yourselves in any of these things, for in all these nations are defiled which I cast out before you. Okay. <laughs> and the land is defiled. Therefore, I do visit the iniquity upon it and the land itself vomit vomited out our inhabitants because the people that were in the land at that time the holy land uh that we we had to get out of there who well, the lord ordered us to get out of there they were practicing wickedness they weren't uh 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 you know promoting the righteousness of the law statutes and commandments they were doing their own thing the heathen this is why it's important that the sons of god rule under the son of god all right and in the kingdom you ain't going to eat no clam. You ain't going to eat no shrimp. You ain't going to eat no catfish. Those things are going to be in the water doing what they're supposed to do. What's wrong with that? And this is what we're telling you. Isaiah 26 and 9, with my soul have I desired thee in the night. Yea, with my spirit within me, all right, will I seek thee early. For when thy judgments are on the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. See, let favor be shown unto the wicked. Yet he will not learn righteousness. In the land of uprightness, he will deal unjustly and will not behold the majesty of the Lord. And this is just one example of that. All right. But in the kingdom, the scriptures say the earth. OK, the earth. Habakkuk 2 and 14 for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of Yahweh as the waters cover the sea. So order is coming back to this earth and you devils and you wicked people 
All right. Uh, uh, the, this is your last. Uh, this is your last go at to just have free reign and wickedness. Okay. Leviticus 20 and 22. You shall therefore keep all my statutes and all my judgments and do them that the land whither I bring you to dwell therein spew you not out and see the people in that land are getting ready to be spewed out. The earth is crying for them to be spewed out of their land. This is why all of that controversy is going on. Okay. But that's pretty much it, man. Um, we could have went deeper into this, but it would have got redundant. All right, but yeah. <laughs> I'm glad they say they weren't eating them. Using them for cleaning the base sounds better. Eating oysters out of New York Bay sounds like a disease waiting to happen. Well, that this Edomite didn't care. Okay. But uh, I just wanted to get into that. The importance of order. The importance of the law, statutes, and commandments. Hopefully you all were edified on to the next Shalom. Giving all praises to Yahweh Bashem Yahshai Bashem. Rechakwadash, double honors to the apostles, the elders, at Great Millstone, who rule well. Peace and salutations unto the elect Shalom.